Hey, welcome back to the second part of our video. In our previous video, we created a, a graphical user interface that's going to help us calculate temperature conversions. In this video, we're going to do the math that will actually do the conversions. So to make this happen, I'm going to have to uh, close this uh, running program and let's go take a look at what our program can do. So if I come to this convert button and this time double click it and instead of putting in a message box, I'm going to start capturing values from our text fields and use them in a formula. So the first thing I want to do is define the value of my Fahrenheit. So I'm going to use a type called float and give the variable name an the letter F and let's just assign it as 0 for the default value. So F is the variable and float is the type. Now I did some quick research from Microsoft and I wanted to see what all of the different types of things that you can assign for numbers. So you might be familiar with integers. An integer can go from negative, what is that, 2 billion something or to the positive 2 billion. Uh, an unsigned short number only goes up to 65,000. Uh, let's see, a byte is very small from 0 to 255. And let's see, I was choosing float. Is float in here? So I don't see float on this list here. Let's go check over here the word types, floating point numbers. So if you want to use decimal points, you use what's called a floating point numeral type. Float, double, and decimal are all three different types. And you can see that the uh, space that is used on the computer's memory is small, medium, and large. And the precision is the key here. So how accurate do you need to be? So I'm choosing float because that's, that's probably going to work for our case. But if you were working with something very precise, you would choose decimal. So I could choose any of those numbers here. I could put in the word decimal. I could put in the word double. And my results would all pretty much work the same. I would use a little bit less memory where the word float and uh, the precision will probably be good enough. So I'm going to stick with float. Now I want to get the value from my, my field, my forms. And so I'm going to type in f equals txt. And now you can see why I've used the word txt as a prefix because Visual Studio gives me a preview of what my choices are. So I want to get the value out of the Fahrenheit text field. So let's go text Fahrenheit. And then I need to put a semicolon at the end. So I can't just assign the text uh, form to the F. I have to get the actual text from the, the item. So let's put in a dot and let's see what our choices are. So you can say, I could say I could get the name of this thing. I could get the location, the anchor. There's all kinds of properties I could get. And the one that I'm interested in is what is the text? What is the value that was input into my field? And so this looks like it's not quite right either. So I still have a red line. Now the reason why the red line is there is because these are incompatible types. So F is a float, and this thing here is a text. And so uh, it says that we got an error down below. You see what the word says? It says, cannot implicitly convert type string to float. Well, we know what float is. That's what F is. But what is string? Well, string is the text. So string is a string of letters. So we need to convert this string into an F or into a float. So there is an actual conversion utility that we need. And I just happen to know what it is. If we type in the word float dot, and then we can have a bunch of things that are available to float numbers. And the one we want is called parse. So parse is a smart uh, function that if we put parentheses around the part that's inside there, it will automatically convert the string that we type and put it into a number. So that'll work as long as you don't put any letters in there. So uh, just it'll convert the number for you. Now let's go back to our formulas and see what we want to get here. So I'm, I'm interested in this one here called Fahrenheit to Celsius. So Celsius is going to be a value that comes 5 ninths uh, times 30, F, F minus 32. So let's see if we can remember that. So my formula is going to be a uh, calculation again. So here's my formula. It's going to be float, and I'm going to name it C. And it's going to be 5 ninths, so 5 slash 9 times F minus 32. So F is the value that was calculated up here. So Fahrenheit 
minus 32. So remember, I can use any letter. I don't have to use F, but that just makes sense here. Okay, so float should be the new guy as a C value. Now, I'm going to have a little problem here, and uh, we're eventually going to have to put the letter F here to let you know that we're going to have to do some more conversions, but that's, that's, that's getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, I'm just going to let you know that this doesn't work quite right. Now, I want to put this value C into the text field. So let's do txt celsius.text. And I'm going to use this as an assignment. So I'm going to not get the value from the text field, but change the value of the text field. And I'm just going to change it to C. Okay. Now, it doesn't like that. It says C is not going to work well because I need to convert it. So C dot to string. So this is going to do the opposite conversion of what we did up here where we did parse. So C is, an, is a float value. String is going to work with a text field. All right, so if I, uh, if I do this correctly, this should convert. Let's see what happens. I'm going to start and, and see what goes. Okay, so here is my program. I'm going to put in a number. Let's say 55 degrees and convert. It says zero. Let's try another number. Let's try 22 degrees. It still says zero. Obviously, zero is not the right answer. I'm supposed to get something else. So like 32 Fahrenheit, it is correct. How about, what if we do 212 Fahrenheit? That should say 100 right now, and it's not, it's not working. So what's happening is we've got some things going on with the integers. So uh, when you do just pure integers here and integers here, it does some rounding errors. So all you have to do is change one of these to 5 and put an F behind it. I could do it behind the 9 or the 5 or both or all of those. But what that will do is it will say this is actually a literal float value and it is not an integer anymore. So let's see what happens now. So now if I put in 32 Fahrenheit, I get 0. What if I put 212? I get 100 degrees. Okay, let's try a 76 degree day. That's just nice. That's 24.4 degrees. So you can see I'm getting float values. So what if I have a negative 20? And what's that in Celsius? That's nine, minus 28. So those of you, the Canadians watching, will think that this is interesting, that Americans can't figure out our, our system very well. So 400 degrees is, is Celsius 204. All right, so this seems to be working. This button doesn't do anything, but uh, we'll get to that. Now I'm going to do the Calvin as uh, the next item. So let's go and one more item we're going to change here. So let's, uh, let's, let's add some more space. So the next formula is quite a bit simpler. Calvin, we'll use the letter K. Calvin is Celsius subtract 273. So it's a very scientific kind of a math uh, formula. So now if I want to assign the value for the Kelvin text area, it should be very similar to what we did before. So I'll type in txt Kelvin dot text equals k to string. So now we should be able to see both of these on my form. Let's go see what that does. So I'm going to type in a number here such as 100 degrees Fahrenheit, convert it, and now you can see I have 37 Celsius and Kelvin is negative. So let's go with boiling water. Let's do 212. Convert, that's 100, and that's 173. So that seems to be calculating correctly. Now I'm going to leave these other two buttons for you to do because it's so sim similar, but uh, we've got the one button working. Now I've got a problem here. What happens if I put in the letters ASDF and try to convert? I'm going to have a problem here when we uh, crash the program. You can see that it stopped, and it says there's an exception. So an exception is an error. And the error says input string was not a correct format. So obviously, uh, ASDF doesn't work. So what we need to do is to check for some errors. I can uh, try this. I can stop the program. And I'm going to put in something called a try catch item. So try and then the word catch. So this is like an if-then if statement. So we're going to try something. And if there's an error, then we're going to run the catch. So I'm just going to grab this item that seemed to cause the problems. I'm going to do control X so it cuts it and then control V for paste. So now we're going to try to convert. If there are no errors, then it will work. If there are errors, then this will happen. So let's put in a message box and just to see if we can show 
and I'll put in try only numbers. So it'll tell the user what's going on here, that's why it didn't work. Let's try this again. Okay, so now I've got a number here. I'm going to type in uh, a number, convert it. I'm going to put in a letter, 123A, and convert. And now I get a catch. So the program doesn't crash, and it gives me a value. So take a look at the code that we've made. This is all for one button. And that will do the calculations for our... Uh, for our conversions. Now, if we've got, we've got a few others to work on, so I'm going to leave those to you as well. So if I were to start on Celsius, for instance, I would click on the Convert button, and now we've got a new method right here called Celsius Click, and you can probably follow this example. You're going to use a different formula, of course, but it'll be the same kind of process. Now you're going to need a, you're going to need a different formula. You're going to need Celsius to Fahrenheit, so you're going to need that one. You're going to need uh, Celsius to Kelvin. You're going to need that one. Now I'm going to show you one more interesting method, and then uh, we're going to stop here and let you work on your own. So I'm going to change this code here to a new method. So I'm going to highlight all of the things that are inside here, and I'm going to cut that out. So I'm going to right-click and cut. And instead, I'm going to put it in a new, new different function. So I'm going to call my new function convert from Fahrenheit. And you can see that I'm using the word private, void. So private means that it's only used in this program. No other programs outside of it can see it. And void means we don't have to worry about any return types. It's just a, we're going to process something. You're not going to send this value to uh, something when you're done. Now, what I'm going to do then is paste all the code inside of there, and it's just the same. I can now take this method name, copy it, and put it inside of my, uh, my button handler. So it should, it should perform the exact same way when I'm done. Now at the end here I need a semicolon and uh, let's just test this to make sure that it runs and see what happens. So now if I type in a number like 21 degrees, negative 6, it seems to be working. Now why would I want to separate this and create its own method outside of there. Well, it just uh, makes this program really short. And let me show you something else that's interesting. You can make this method occur in more than one place. So I'm going to go back to form one, click on the button. I'm, I'm going to click on the text here, and go to the arrows or the um, I'm sorry, the lightning bolt. Now let's go look at some of the actions. So you can see that we have a click action. There's nothing assigned to it. But what I want to find here is uh, something down here called, I'm going to look down all the way until I come to text changed. And so now I'm going to make a new method. So let's call it on text change. Okay, so I'm just making up a new function and pressing enter. And so now we have a on text change event. Now what happens if I do on text change? I can now take this same method here, copy it, and paste it there. And let's start it. So now when I type in a number, let's try the number 9, you can see it automatically calculates it. So every time the text changes, it calls that method. So you don't have to wait until you uh, actually click the convert button now. So it's an instantaneous conversion. So that might be another option that you find interesting. Okay, now the rest of it is your challenge, is make this button work, and make this button work, and then you've got yourself a completed app. But I've taken you quite a ways here, and I hope that you get well on your way now without my help.